the dream. It says, Joseph, dreamer and interpreter of dreams. So, we read Genesis 37, verse 5. We begin. Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it his brethren. They hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. He said, Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, and also, notice what he said, stood out, upright. Anybody know what upright symbolizes? Eshuran, that's a name, that's a title for upright. Okay? And behold, your sheep stood around about and made obedience to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, notice what they say, shall thou indeed reign over us? And then they said, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And then it says, and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for what else? For his words. Now, why did his brethren say these two things? Shall thou indeed reign over us? How do you get interpretation, knowledge, wisdom? How do you interpret Joseph's dream when he says that his sheep arose and stood upright? What does that mean? That means that they were all binding sheep in the field. What is the sheep? What is it used for? Hmm? For fruits. For fruits. But what is it? A grain of wheat. What grains are used? Hmm? Wheat, rye, and what? And barley. So when you harvest wheat, rye, or barley, guess what? You bind, you cut them, and you bind them together and let them, because they're green when you cut them, and they mature for harvest. Right? So these are what's being harvested. And it says that his sheep in his dream, his sheep arose, in other words, came up. And it said, stood upright. And then it says, your sheep stood around and made obedience. Meaning what? They worshipped it. So, they bow down to it. So in their words, shall thou indeed, verse 8, reign over us? Because of his dream? What had happened to Joseph before this? His father had placed on him what? A covering. A covering suggests what? What was who gave Christ the covering? The king. Who gave him his mantle? The king. And who was it? Authority. Elders. So when they put that on you, you now became authority. You have authority with the one giving it to you. So Joseph receives it from whom? Jacob. So in Jacob covering Joseph, here is a clear indication that Joseph is selected to be over all his brethren. They recognize that. That's why when they take back the covering with blood on it, and give it back to the father. It was like telling the father, 
we rule. Because an absolute dishonor, spitting the Father's authority, more or less. Because that's what they took back to. What offended them? Here it says. When he gave them that, it says, his brethren saw that their father loved him the more. How did his father express his love for Joseph? By placing this covering on him. So when they return in Genesis 37, 31 and 32, let's read. And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goats and dipped the goat in blood, coat in blood, and they sent, notice what they did, they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, this have we found. And notice what they said to him. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. Did they know it was? Did they know that the father would say it was? How did they know? Because over here, when he received it, they hated him even more. See? And it says in verse 31, And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. See? Now, why did the sons do this? Why did they take back the symbolism of Jacob's authority? The symbol of his authority over Joseph and, and his house. Why did they take it back and give it to the father in that manner? See? They were... So here you have this important example. How many dreams did Joseph dream? Two dreams. Most people tell this story, they make one dream out of it. But it's two dreams. Why are they important? Verse 9 says, He dreamed yet another dream, and he told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed the dream, more. He said, Behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars made obedience to me. He says, And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I, notice what he says, Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brothers envied him, right? But his father observed the same. Now, in the first dream, what happens? Did the first dream come true? Did they? Make obedience to, to Joseph? How do you know that? Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 42. Look at Genesis 42. Verses, verse 2. Again in verse 2. <clears throat> when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do ye look one to another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down there and buy it for us from thence, that you may live and not die. Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, This preadventure of mischief may befall him. So the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, 
for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed themselves down before him with their faces to the earth. Okay? The first dream has come true. Look at Genesis 43, verse 28. And what does it say? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health, yet he is yet alive. And they bowed their heads and made obedience to him. So they actually made obedience to him. The actual word obedience is actually used here. Why? Because the dream came true. Notice in verse 29, he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spoke unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. Now at this point, all the brethren are there. So this will mean how many brothers are there? Eleven. In the first, there were only 10 that came. In this one, there's 11. Jake Benjamin is now with them. So there's 12 Joseph. 12 Joseph. Okay? So here, did the dream come true? Yes, he did. Why did Jacob observe Joseph's sayings. Why is Joseph so important here? At the age of 17, when he goes out to check on his brethren and they cast him into the pit and sell him, to whom do they sell him? Hmm? Look at 35 and 36 of Genesis 37. And all his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, that is, Jacob, when he found out that Joseph was dead. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So it was the Midianites that actually sold him to Potiphar, but who took him? Who took him as a slave? To whom did they sell them? Hmm? Verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. So, the Midianites, merchantmen, or part of whom? Ishmaelites. To whom will Moses go when he leaves Egypt? He will go to work. Media. To what? To a priest of media. Why? Who was Ishmael? Isaac's brother. Joseph is being handled. Notice the coat of many colors, the cover. Even into slavery, his trip is being guided, protected. He's covered. He goes into slavery. Now, 
He goes prepared. In verse 30, chapter 39, verse 1, we read, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. How can someone be prosperous in slavery? It says the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. Why was he prosperous? What did Jacob place on him? covering. Verse 3 says, His master saw that the Lord was with, with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph, verse 4, found grace in, the sight, in his sight, and served him, and made him overseer of his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in the field. So Joseph is handled by family into slavery. By family. Ishmaelites. And he's sold not to a common man. He's sold to whom? An officer of Pharaoh, a man of wealth, and a captain of the guard. He's put in a position of authority in this man's house. And the Lord says, the scripture says the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. Why is this important? What his brethren try to do, what is the Lord doing? So when the brethren come and finally come to him, and he will be betrayed, Joseph will be betray, betrayed, and, and they will treat him badly. But when they finally come to recognize Joseph, his brethren will realize that the hands and that the voice and the words of Joseph that whatever they attempted to do, God had prepared Joseph. He sent him ahead. He sent him ahead to prepare for Jacob and the rest of Israel to come. Why? Because he was going to save them. He saved them. It is important that we understand why this coat of many colors has been placed on him. It's important that the covering of God is on him. And the reason for that covering has been to preserve Israel that will come into the land after the famine. If Joseph had not been sent ahead of time, there will be no redemption, no preparation for Israel. Remember, Egyptians and Hebrews could not partake of the same harvest, same foods, same quarters, because the Hebrew was, a, was an abomination to the Egyptian. And yet here is an a Hebrew governor over in Egypt. You think that was a coincidence? You think God had a better plan? Why? Why is that important? Why is a Hebrew governor over Egypt? Why is Joseph governor over Egypt? For whose purpose? 
to preserve Israel on the earth. So here you have Joseph going into captivity, prepared. It's important that we understand why Joseph labored so hard to bring his father to him. He put up with his brethren, his betray their betrayal, and everything that he suffered. He finally understood why he, this had happened to him. And he understood why the covering was on him. The tabernacle of the Lord has a covering on it. It has many colors on it. Do you know why? It's a covering. Why is that covering there? What's the covering on the Israel of God today? What does Galatians 6.16 tell us about the Israel of God? Hmm? What does it say? Galatians 6.16. says, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Okay? And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. What is he talking about? Read from verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whosoever man soweth, that hath she also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Who is the Spirit? What is Spirit? The Word of God. Ah. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to them who are of the household of what? Faith. Okay? You see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only least they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised. Notice what it says. That they may glory in your flesh. What's that important? Why is this? That they may glory in your flesh, but God forbid that I should glory, save the cross of our Lord Christ Jesus. And it says this very simply, by whom, notice what it says, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. I do not like denominational names. They glory in the flesh. Circumcision for the Jew was to make you a Jew, not to make you Israel. Got it? That's why the Pharisees insisted that join the movement, insisted that the Gentiles be circumcised so they can be glorified in their flesh, meaning now they are Jews like us. No. No. The purpose for the circumcision was 
to identify those who are dedicated and to the multiplied promise of prosperity in the flesh numbers of God. People who had circumcised not only the symbol of circumcision on their flesh, but their hearts were circumcised. There is a circumcision that's going to happen without hands, and it's on the heart. Why the heart? Because they don't glory in the flesh. You don't neither, you're neither a practicing Buddhist, or Catholic, or Jewish, or Muslim, or anything else. You are Israel of God. Who is the Israel of God? Why is Jacob covered? There's a reason for all of this. In the second dream that Jacob has, that, that Joseph has, Jacob says this. He says, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come down and bow ourselves to the, to the earth? Why did Jacob say this? Why did he include his mother? Who is Joseph's mother? Rachel. Rachel. She was already dead. So why is Jacob saying this now? How could someone that is dead come down and bow before someone? So what does Jacob interpret this to mean? What is Jacob seeing? That's why it says, his brethren envied him in verse 11 and 37 11, but his father observed the same. Why? What did Jacob know concerning Joseph? Why did, he, why did he select Joseph to place that covering on him? Because he was the child of his old age? Or he knew? What happened to Jacob when he wrestled with the angel? Hmm? Go to Genesis 48. In Genesis 48, verse 16, Jacob says this, before he blesses the sons of Joseph and Joseph, he makes this statement in verse 16. He says, The angel which redeemed me from all evil. So when the angel, when Jacob wrestled with the angel and was blessed by the angel through the name he gave him, what happened? What was that blessing? He says it right here. Redeem me from all evil. Bless the lands, and let my name be on them. And let the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And verse 15 says, And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom, before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, did walk, the God which fed me all my life long until this day, Remember the vow that Jacob made? If God will what? Feed me. And put raiment on my And do what? Keep me on my way and bring me back to my father's house in peace. Remember the vow. How and why would he make that kind of vow? He understood. So what was wrestling with the angel mean? And being blessed by the angel, what did it mean? Do you understand now what Jacob wanted? Because he redeemed him from all evil. So when he put his name and changed his name to Israel, Israel will be redeemed 
from all evil. The Israel of God will be redeemed from all evil. Jacob knew this. So when he puts the blessing on the children and puts that name, what is he saying to them? They shall be redeemed, and they shall be a multitude in the earth, and they will be redeemed from all evil. It's interesting that in the future events of Scripture, you're going to find that Israel, the ten tribes of Israel in the northern kingdom, will go into captivity first. They are led by Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph. They go into captivity first. Jacob's son, Joseph, goes into captivity first. Then comes Benjamin with the rest. And they dwell in Egypt and then they go into captivity again. In the history that we're going to read of here in future texts, Israel will go into captivity. The ten tribes of the north, Israel will go into captivity first. And then Judah, Jacob, son, Benjamin, Benjamin, Levi, and Judah, which are the southern kingdom, will go into captivity second. One goes into captivity where? Assyria. The other one goes into captivity where? Babylon. They're taken captive by whom? Who were they? Who built? Who was Asher? Nineveh? Assyria? Who was he? Firstborn of Shem. Who repented? Nineveh repented. Babylon, Ur, the Chaldees. Who came from there? Abraham. Hey, it was the Ishmaelites that took Joseph in. It was Babylon that freed Israel after 70 years and returned them back to Jerusalem. Brethren, it's here. We will go into captivity. The Israel of God will go into captivity again. But this time, when we come out, we come out into the new kingdom, into the new Jerusalem, redeemed from all evil. Redeemed from all evil. Hence the name, hence the covering, hence the blessing. It's interesting. The book of Ruth. Let's go to the book of Ruth. Chapter 4. Ruth after Judges. The book of Ruth, chapter 4, verse 7. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For the, to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said to Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was in Elimelech <clears throat> and all that was Kilion's and Mahal, 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 Mahal's, uh, easy for you guys to say, of the land of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Mahal, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. 
The Lord make the woman that is come into thy house like Rachel, Rachel, and like Leah, which too did build a house of what? Israel, and do worthily in Ephrathah and famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Perez and Tamar bear unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and he was his wife. And when he went in her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. The woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without kinsmen, that his name may be famous in Israel. Now, And she shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thy old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loves thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, has borne him. And Naomi took the child, and laid it in her bosom, and became nurse to it. And the woman of her neighbors gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they call his name what? And his father, he is the father of who? The father of who? Ah. There had to be a redemption and a cleansing before Israel can continue with its kinsmen. kinsmen. In the book of Matthew, chapter 2, notice who comes. Book of Matthew, chapter 2. 12 to 18. Being warned of God in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, <clears throat> behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee where? To Egypt. And be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked, of the wise men was exceedingly wroth and sent forth, slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in the coast, in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, What? In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Who were Rachel's sons? Joseph and Benjamin. What happened to the offspring, the kinsmen that came? Joseph descendants went into captivity. First, just like Joseph went into Egypt, first. Benjamin goes to captivity with Babylon, into Babylon with Levi, the Levites, and Judah. They came out. When the Lord brought the descendants of Jacob out of Israel, out of Egypt. He called them out as one person, Israel, my firstborn. There's too much symbolism here to try to get it all together, but you get the picture. If you want to understand what's coming in Revelation concerning Revelation 12, concerning Revelation 7 and 14, understand Joseph and his captivity, the dream that he had. Connect the dots 
in Scripture. There was a reason for this. There's always been a reason for everything. But the Scriptures are not given to us in the form of Old and New Testament. They're given, us, they're given to us in the form that Jesus taught them. How do you teach them? In the method of the law, Moses, the prophets, and the writings, the Psalms, beginning the five books. Why? Because you can follow it, chronology, the chronology of how the events will come to play. If you try to understand why Matthew is speaking and what Rachel, what this prophet is actually saying in Matthew without understanding Joseph, you'll never get to Ruth. And without Ruth, you won't understand how they were redeemed by kinsmen. We will be redeemed by kinsmen. Our ancestors, all our ancestors who were faithful to the scriptures, faithful to God, somehow managed to keep the house of faith alive. The Israel of God is a faithful people and they're faithful to one truth, God's instruction. They don't waver from it. You know why? Too much evidence. Too much evidence. How can you go against the evidence? If he tells you this will happen, the evidence is there and it's happened time and time again. Hmm? You know, I'm going to do it the same way, although it doesn't work, but I'm going to do it the same way, expecting a different result. What's that called? Insanity. Brethren, it's there. It's here. There's a reason for the sheep. There's a reason for the rising in the sheep. There's a reason for the term upright. All this is there. The next lesson will cover that. The upright one. Yeshua who was born in the wilderness and gave birth to Israel. From where comes whom? Matthew. From where comes whom? The one who redeems his own. The one anointed salvation of Jehovah is the one redeemed. And he can redeem you. He will redeem all of Israel from all evil. All of God's Israel from all evil. He's here. This understanding. He's been prepared for us to receive. Let's recognize it. Let's close. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for Shabbat. We thank you for the time, Father, that we have to open the scriptures and freely partake. Father in heaven, there is so much that we need to continue to unravel and unseal, Father. As we search and learn, we apply, Father. And we learn to be faithful to what you teach us. Everything in our lives, Father, is dependent and contingent on us having faith in what you have placed in our hands. That we recognize it as truth, Father, and we will model our lives according to it. We're not perfect, but we are faithful. We do not claim, Father, holiness, but we seek holiness. So, Father in heaven, bless this humble people, this humble congregation, and be with them continually, Father. And lead us, Father, in the path of righteousness all our lives. Until Christ returns. Until we are redeemed into the kingdom forever. 